Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, we're taking a look at the latest update to Oxygen Not Included Space Style DLC called Mine the Gap. So, this one introduces a new component on the, on top of our rockets here that actually allow us to go and do something that we were able to do in the base version of the game, and that is to go out to certain destinations, mine stuff up, and bring it back for use inside of our base. So what is new here? Well, all of these little asteroid fields or little places of space junk and whatnot, these are all new. Uh, up until now, we've had to go to different planets, and on the planet, you can actually visit and, you know, and pick up little critters and whatnot and mine things, load them up, shoot them, or whatever it is to bring it back to your uh, main base if that's what you want to do. However, we now have these clusters of what seem to be mineable resources. So you can see here, this is a system that we had in the base version of the game where there's a total amount of mass and then there's a certain percentage of resources available at that location. And the further away you get from your starting zone, the more valuable the resources are going to be. So right here we can see, you know, you might have copper ore, that might be the most valuable thing there. Or one that's right nearby here, such as aluminum ore. But as you step out a little bit further here, you get an organic mass. That'll give you algae, which is good for oxygen or dirt. Or you can get out here to like the radioactive asteroid field where you might be able to mine up some uranium. You know, you get a little bit further and you might find a gold asteroid field. Mmm. We have fullerene down there. Oh, yeah. There's some other ones that are even more valuable, like the glimmering asteroid fields and... Oh, 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 yeah. Anyhow, the base... The, the, the thing here is that you can fly out and use your rockets as kind of a way to mine up something and bring it back. So I want to see how this works in practice. So let's head back to our main base here. What you can see is I've set up a couple of different rockets, just kind of quickly slapped them down here inside of a sandbox mode. Uh, on the left here, you can see that we have a big petroleum engine. This is about as big as our rocket can get at this point. 35 uh, tiles tall. So if you look at the engines, you can actually see that they are now rated by how tall they can be. So if I were to go to slap one of these down real quick, and we go to click on a new rocket here, you can see the different engines. Uh, and you get a lot more details here. It's a lot easier to understand, such as the speed, the engine power, potential range and whatnot. Um, but your two biggest rockets you're going to have is the petroleum ones or the hydrogen. And you can click on that. Click build on it. and broop, There we go. Apparently, one of the changes that they made in this update is the takeoff and landing speed and animations are going to be slightly different. And they might also depend on how tall the rocket is as well. So you might get larger rockets taking off a little bit slower than smaller rockets. We'll see. But obviously, the key piece of uh, equipment that we now have on these rockets here is this new drill cone. So you can see that that is four modules tall. So you can't really fit it on like the smallest rocket here. But you can fit it on, you know, some relatively smaller rockets. I have a small petroleum engine here, a steam engine, or the Radbolt unit if you're a little bit more advanced, but not quite huge, right? Now, one of the key things to keep in mind here is that this drill cone is not free to run. It requires diamond as a resource. So you can see that you have to deliver to that to kind of, I don't know, sharpen up the teeth or something. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. I have some diamond here. But just in case you're wondering if, they're, if you're going to run out of diamond or something inside of the game, there is actually a new piece of equipment right down here, and this is the diamond press. So how this works is it takes in refined carbon and then compresses that down to diamond. So we start with carbon, which you can get out of something like a hatch or something, and then you refine it in the kiln to refine carbon, and then right on over here you can run the diamond press. Now the diamond press requires... A little bit of power, only about 240 watts here, plus a duplicate that's getting a, an absolute workout. Frankie is uh, going to be real tired by the end of the cycle. And it also takes a, a little bit of rad bolts as well. So this gives us another working uh, use for radiation. So I have a little bit of a the dev generator over here just for radiation. That's something available in the sandbox only, but that's how I'm getting that to run. Boop, there we go. Uh, one of the other changes they made here was to the research station for nuclear stuff. So yeah, that looks a little bit different, but it's the exact same thing as far as how it works, as far as I can tell. Uh, looking at the research tree, they did make some changes here. Just kind of reshuffled things around to balance them a little bit more. Without actually playing through the game, though, I can't tell you how that actually plays. 
unless I were to start all over again, which thankfully I don't have to do. My star map did update, by the way. So, whew. <laughs> I know a lot of us, uh, at least in the comments, were like, oh, no, we got to start over again. I can't keep up. At least not this time. Uh, but it looks like as far as all uh, all the research that takes all four technologies uh, starts right here. And then everything to the left of that just takes, you know, nuclear and, and whatnot. So, yeah, okay. I think they've also made the space research a little bit more expensive. It looks like there's less things you need it for, but they're more expensive. All right, well, let's take a look at the rockets here. We should have some of these loaded up. Frankie's been working on this one. Oh yeah, there we go. Loaded, 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 loaded. And as you can see, you don't necessarily need the gantry. I, I tested that right there. Frankie is going up to load that. Yep, there we go. All right, let's give this one a try. So inside of here, we have Frankie. Frankie, you're gonna be the crew for this one. Let me give you the skills you need. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. We all have rocket duplicates. Come on over here and upgrade yourselves. All right, dupes, are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? There you go. You've got a little bit of oxygen, some berry sludge from your grandma, and an outhouse. Um, pre-used. All right, so let me start with this small rocket here, the steam one. And I'm just going to set its destination to be this forest ore field here, which it seems to be ready to go. <laughs> Hang on. This one has igneous rock, a little bit of carbon dioxide, and aluminum ore. All right, there goes the steam. And off it goes. All right, so well, I got a rocket flying out there. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Get a little animation for it. Okay, so the rocket with the Radbolt engine, I can actually take this one, and since it has 24 tiles of range, I can make it fly all the way out here to the glimmering asteroid field. So that actually has a very long reach. Not incredibly fast, though. Only 1.4 tiles per cycle. All right, so let's give this a try. Ah! Oops. So that seemed to be about the exact same speed. A little bit slower. <laughs> Fair amount of radio. Well, you yeah, can't really see it, but... <laughs> All right, so for my third rocket here, which does have an artifact transport module, let's go ahead and change its destination right out here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one does seem like it's slow. But there it goes. All right, we're gonna give the last rocket here a little bit more oomph. This machine, sorry, this fuel needs to be a little bit better. Let's give it the old liquid oxygen. I'm not sure what's going on here, but <laughs> it does seem to be working. Eh? Nope, all right. All right, there we go. Gave this sucker lots of fuel. <laughs> Let's see if we can bring back a humongous amount of stuff from a large cargo bay. I'm not 100% sure if that's how that works, but we'll see. There we go. We don't have the boosters anymore, by the way. I kind of noticed that, but that one launched off... Um, I would say it launched faster, but we were on 3x speed. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't slow it down. Anyhow, I now have rockets out here, so let's just go ahead and speed things up. Okay, so one of the things I noticed is when you hover over a rocket like this, you can see cargo capacity remaining, 27 tons. And this one here has 12 tons. That one has 21. Uh, okay, interesting. Okay, I got my first rocket reaching a destination. Pluto, what are you doing? You're taking a poop. That's what's going on. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so if I click on this, it says artifact collected. If you take a look at the drill cone here, you can see that we have a certain amount of diamond. It's not drilling. So really all I think I need to do is fly out there and then fly back. This poor rocket. <sighs> Steam powered is so slow. You're gonna be gone forever, bud. To be fair, all of these rockets with their giant cargo bays are fairly slow. 
survivability inside of these rockets is going to be what's really important. And just from the looks of it, it kind of looks like you're probably not going to go out there and collect everything at a certain spot. You're probably going to go collect the solids or the gases or the liquids. Maybe not try to collect all of them at the same time. It depends. I don't know. If you can build a really good um, module inside of here to keep your dupes alive, then maybe. There's a ladder so you can breathe, bud. Oh, all right. Got my first rocket coming back. So the animation here should be a little bit different. I think they said the uh, engine will be running for just a little bit longer when it lands. Oh, I'm having this poor gantry. <laughs> Yeah, see, it stays on for a little bit. Mmm. Did you produce a lot of gas while you were doing that? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, buddy. Anyhow, inside of here is, look at that, a little Rubik's Cube. How fancy. Boop. <laughs> the mystery of the universe has already been solved. Neat. All right, looking back at space, we've got a couple more rockets out there. Just about ready to get to wherever they're headed. For whatever reason, I can't click on this rocket. Why? Hmm? Hmm? Who knows? <laughs> Guess we didn't need to look at that one anyhow. All right, there we go. So the really big rocket made it to this little rocky asteroid field. Although I can't click on it for some odd reason. That's the larger liquid, oxy uh, liquid rocket. All right, so there we go. Both of these have actually made it to their destination. If I click on the inspect, ooh, okay. We discovered something. Click on the rocket over here. You can see that it is in the process of drilling. Can I see what we're doing here? We're extracting resources at 7.5 kilograms per second. So let me just speed this up real quick. You can see that this glimmering asteroid only has a, a, a total amount of mass at 8.5. So I should be able to actually take everything from this. I might actually see this stop at some point. So what I'm guessing I'm seeing here, so what I think I'm seeing here is that you cannot store resources and I think that it has to do with the gas. I don't have a gas module on this rocket. Hmm, you might have to do some math once you actually get to wherever you're going just to see how long you can actually remain there. All right, so my first rocket here is about to run out of diamonds for the drill cone. We can see that right down here in the bottom right. And uh, interestingly enough, the point of interest mass is actually you know, the mass remaining has gone up for some odd reason. I don't think that's possibly working as intended. Or maybe it'll change once I go to leave. But let's see what happens here. I have filled up as much as I can do here. So let's go ahead and bring that back. If I can bring this rocket back, yeah, let's do that one as well. I wasn't able to click on it, so I had to go to the rocket itself, click on the control station. It's another way of doing it. This guy down here took so long to get there. Still running. Okay, so one thing I noticed here is that the cargo capacity remaining, like I wasn't able to fill up that large cargo unit with just the drill cone. So it maybe it isn't really worth bringing the giant one all the way out here to one of these points. Because it doesn't seem like you have enough diamonds to fill it up. Which kind of makes sense, because uh, this is such a long trip, it'd be kind of hard to do. Oh, you can see what's inside the rocket if you go all the way right down here. It's a little bit off the screen, but there it is. Igneous rock and some aluminum ore. If I click on this one, inside of here, we can see the cargo bay. We have some wolframite and coal and then tungsten inside the liquid tank. Very nice. All right, so I have another rocket that is landing right now. Let's take a look how this works. Um, <laughs> are you not landing? No, I think this is messing it up or not. What? What is wrong with that rocket? <laughs> nope. What's happening to this platform? Oh, okay. You're going to land over here this time. I, I, I told you. <laughs> okay. Well, fine. All right. So where is the cargo? Is it in here? Yes. Yes, it is. So now what we should be seeing is coal being delivered down here. Awesome. And it should have liquid inside of here. Yeah, so we have tungsten. And this is a liquid rocket port unloader. And I can't seem to unload liquid tungsten out of it. Let's just rebuild that thing. Maybe... Oh. 
Nope. Hmm. Well, I guess they didn't test all of that. We click empty storage. Ah, yeah, there it goes. <laughs> now, some poor dupe. Please come pick this up. It's only 3,070 degrees Celsius. You'll be fine. Let's actually just bring it on over here real quick, and we'll just say, oh, oh no, it's melting its way down to the core. <laughs> no, take this. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, well, now we've done it. <laughs> All right, we get the idea of what how this is supposed to work. Although I have run into a couple of problems. One, you can't unload tungsten. Two, for some odd reason, I have a rocket that is now, well, I don't know. It is vanished into the vacuum of space or something. Like I can't, I can't land it. Help. <laughs> Flight to orbit, minus 1.1 cycles. That does not seem okay. Clay, I, I think I broke your game. Sorry. Oh, wait, there it goes. Land. He's <laughs> somewhere. Oh, no. Nope. That's not working. Land here. Land here. Rest in peace, man. You never get to land. Ah, the steam rocket is finally back, and look at what it's doing. Hmm, bringing back all of that nice aluminum ore. Yeah. Look at all that. Oh man, I was able to mine up a ton from that spot. Now we got all this igneous rock. Beautiful. I wish conveyors always moved this fast. <laughs> that would be awesome. Look at that. 2,000 kilograms of aluminum ore, 14,000 kilograms of igneous rock. All right, so I take that back. If you can get a large cargo bay all the way out there to one of those spots, then you can use up that entire uh, drill capacity to bring back, in this case, we were able to bring back 2,000 kilograms of aluminum ore and then another 14,000 of igneous rock right there. So I wasn't able to quite fill this large cargo bay. However, I was able to bring back a lot. However, if you take a look at the other rocket that has a smaller cargo bay, you can see that inside of here, we filled it up with 12 tons of material, but we still have about 250 kilograms of diamond on the drill cone. So it's not perfect one-to-one, -one, but you might take a smaller, uh, like solid module, and then maybe like a liquid or gas to kind of go with that. I'm sure there's some sort of balance there if you really wanted to. But anyhow, that's how that stuff works. Uh, it does look like there might be a few little bugs and glitches that they need to work out just yet, but I like it. The drill cone definitely adds a whole nother level to what you're doing uh, in space. And it kind of really makes the rockets quite useful as far as um, going out there and collecting resources that you don't necessarily have to pull in from a planet. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, adds a new layer to the game if you wanted to try to set up a little remote base here and need to bring things back or maybe go out here and collect them and then fire it off via the railgun thing and shoot that back to your main base or something like that. Cool. I like it. All right, one more thing you need to keep in mind here in case you've been using a vacuum chamber to keep your food frozen. Uh, as it turns out, that no longer works. They have closed that loophole. I'm sure we'll find yet another way to get around it, but for right now, um, the temperature of the food is what is used to determine whether or not it is frozen. Not necessarily the fact that it's in a vacuum. So, you know, you're either gonna have to store it somewhere cold, like all the way down here where it's cold enough to get frozen, or just use a refrigerator to kind of cool it down in the first place. Anyhow. That's what's up right there. I think the refrigerator inside of a carbon dioxide environment is possibly the easiest way to go. But that's something you're going to have to keep in mind, especially if you've already set up a base here and you're looking to play the game after this update because your food might, your food is now spoiling. So that should be the first thing we deal with there. Isn't that right, me? Uh, if you take a look at the star map here, you can see that yes, in, even in my base right here, they did bring in the other um, point of interest, so. Luckily for me, I have one right next to my base. Ha ha! And it's got copper ore, algae, sand, <laughs> and sandstone. Why, thank you. I'll take unlimited filtration medium, oxygen, and <laughs> refined metal. That seems like a sweet little combo that I don't even have to go anywhere to get to. <laughs> Why, thank you, game. 
At any rate, that's all I got time for today. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. I'll be playing, uh, continuing my playthrough here, and it will be relevant with the Mind the Gap update. So, have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.